the reason why AT&T has one of its key principles open <coughs> is the goal is to have like an open API, whether it's open source or it's a standard uh, defined open, the key thing is to have it open. Um, as a platform, when we're trying to go into this new area, SDN and, and virtualization, this is really a platform for our, our, our services. And we're realizing that there's a lot of functional blocks and each of those functional blocks are evolving in their own way. And if we can have at least an open framework, then as these blocks move around, as, and we, we change from you know, proprietary to maybe open and so forth, we don't have to constantly rearrange this um, framework. So open is definitely very critical to us so that we don't have um, an environment that's really well, proprietary, which then forces you down a path of one vendor. We really want to find the best in breed of all these different functional blocks, and the only way to do that is to have the right functional model with the right open interfaces so that each of those functional blocks can innovate in their own rate. We're really getting involved in the open projects that are strategic to at t so that they're intertwined in what we're trying to do. Um, and then ones that are not as intertwined, we're not participating. But, I mean, I say that simply, so there's, so we're building a lot of our own components, so where we're building and we're using open source, those we're definitely getting more engaged. But there's a lot of open source that we're not directly engaged in, in, in building, like, you know, DBDK or even OVS and so forth. But we, so we're not active in it, but if there are issues going on related, maybe the community isn't as strong, or the governance isn't as strong, or the governance isn't as broad of a coalition and might be driven, let's say, by um, one organization or one company, then we might actually get involved. So at t has a Domain 2.0 program, which is basically we're going to have 75% of our network to be SDN enabled as well as on a cloud, virtualized, uh, by 2020. We're like on target of meeting that, meeting 5% by the end of this year. And SDN controllers are strategic to what we're doing. And since it was, it was always a strategic component, years ago when this whole thing started, we actually were looking to see if we could buy something from a vendor. And we realized at that time, the industry was all over the place on what a controller should do. And we realized what was coming out in the market, which was really more marketing than anything, was not going to solve our problem. So we decided to design and build our own controller. And we decided Open Daylight was the right framework and had the right pieces for us to build our controller on. So we're building our global controller and some of our local controllers um, off of Open Daylight functions. And because it's becoming more strategic, we're now a silver member uh, for Open Daylight. We're getting more and more active. We actually submitted um, some code that we created related to a Yang Design Studio through the ODL um, organization in their Yang Tool project. We're really having discussion, to, should we submit some more piece parts of our controller we've developed into open daylight. <laughs>